the first thing we need to do when evaluating for sine and nine pi over four, is there are a couple things we need to do. First, we need to understand that where exactly is the angle nine pi over four. All right, well, actually, first of all, let's draw that here. So remember when graphing 9 pi over 4, all right, first thing we do is remember we always start with our initial side. If it's positive, we go in the counterclockwise direction. And if the angle is negative, we go in the clockwise direction. All right? We always start here at our initial side, initial. Now we're going to rotate 9 pi over 4. Now remember where we get to pi is remember if you take your radius of a circle, Oh, this is the unit circle, and you wrap your radius around your circle, right? It goes once, twice, three, and this ending part is what we call 0.14159 dot, 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 and that is the approximation of pi, all right? So halfway around, the number of radiuses that go halfway around a circle is pi. So if I say we're looking at 9 pi over 4, well, 9 pi over 4 is greater than 1, right? So what I always like to do when I look at my denominator, if I say pi, I know that's the same thing as 4 pi over 4. It's the exact same measurement. 4 pi over 4 is exactly the same as pi, right? Because the 4s would divide into 1. So now what I can do is I can break up my quadrant. Kind of forget about the radians. I did. Now what I can do is break up my quadrant into force. Oh, actually, I was wanting to do that now. Well, Break it up into force. Well, this is greater than 4 pi over 4, so I'm going to break the bottom half into force. I'll go over this, and I'll use this one for my unit circle. Um, so let's just count them. 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, 8 pi over 4, 9 pi over 4. OK, so we always start our initial side. We rotate around to 9 pi over 4. Now, this is nice because our angle is now in um, the first quadrant. However, ladies and gentlemen, doing all this work, we don't have to do all this rounding and rounding and rounding. If you guys can remember, when we talked about coterminal angles, we added and subtracted to find the smallest positive and the smallest negative angles, correct? That's what we did. We'd add and subtract. Sometimes we had to add three times, 260 or, or 360 or 2 pi, just to get to a coterminal angle. So what we can do, rather than dealing with drawing a graph every single time and trying to figure out where our angle is, a lot of times what we can do is if we have an angle that's greater than 2 pi, right, or it's greater than one revolution of a circle, even if that's greater than 360, what we can do is what we call using period as an aid. What we can do is we can find the coterminal angle. All right. So let's go and take 9 pi over 4. Let's find the smallest. Um, angle that is over here. Well, if I know that this is 4 pi over 4, then all the way around the circle would be 8 pi over 4. So can I subtract 9 pi over 4, and I, can I subtract 8 pi over 4, which is one revolution of a circle and still have a positive angle? Yes. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll take 8 pi over 4, I'm sorry, 9 pi over 4 minus 8 pi over 4. That leaves me with pi over 4. Now that's very helpful because you know, yeah, you could do this, you know, but what if I gave you what if I gave you an angle that was um, 47 pi over four? That's a lot of circles you're going to be drawing, right? So what you could do though, instead of doing all those little circles, is you can just keep on subtracting revolutions, which would be keep on subtracting two pi to be able to find your coterminal angle. So what I'm really trying to evaluate for is sine of pi over four. So going back to the unit circle. In my videos, what I showed you uh, that I wanted you guys to do was to make sure you had the first quadrant memorized. All right, we'll worry about the rest of the quadrant later. But if you guys can have this first quadrant, the points on the first quadrant memorized, you know this point is going to be 1, 0. This is 0, 1. And then we had three angles. OK, the first angle was 30 degrees, which is the same thing as pi over 6. The coordinate points for when an angle on for the coordinate points for a point on the unit circle at that angle measure is square root of three over two comma one half. For this angle, which is forty-five degrees, or which is equal to pi over four, the coordinate point is square root of two over two comma square root of two over two. 
All right, just to help you out, this last angle, which is 60 degrees, which is pi thirds, is 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. Those are, the, those are the five points you guys need to know, all right? But that's another story. We already know sine of pi over 4, that's going to be that point right there. Now remember, the sine of an angle equals your y-coordinate. So sine of pi over 4 is going to represent the y-coordinate of that point. And the y-coordinate of pi over 4 is? Uh, the y-coordinate is square. Just the one, just the y-coordinate. That's all we need. Yes, question. Yes. No, nope, it just says the value for sine. So that's why I gave you guys more of them. Yes? How do you know that that was the point that? Um, uh, less, Never mind. yeah. But, uh, okay. you, you like, oh, how did I know that point was there? Or it was here? Uh, yeah. But I yeah, because here, from here to here is pi over 4. Mm -hmm. And if I wrap around my circle, from here to here is just pi force. And also, when I subtract that, I get pi 4. So that's how I knew that was, that's where it's at. OK? Questions? And that's why it's nice, ladies and gentlemen, because if I say, where's 9 pi over 4? In your head, you got you to gotta map your circle. You got to be like, OK, how many times am I going to wrap it around? And then am I going to go up to here? But if you just easily subtract 8 pi over 4, which is a revolution, now you found a small coterminal angle that's positive. Pi over 4, oh, first quadrant, pi over 4. Oh, that's, the, that's 45 degrees. That's square root of 2 over 2, comma square root of 2 over 2. Memorized, right? I am not 